Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Dempsey. I've been using Affinity for iPad for quite a while now, having graduated from the desktop version. I'm really impressed with the capability of the iOS app version. It has almost all the functionality of its desktop sibling. The challenge is finding where all these functions live. Many of them are hidden, so I wanted to share three of my favorite tips with you today. Have you ever used a textured background and found yourself stretching it out because it's too small? There is a way in Affinity Photo to expand a texture to any size you like without actually stretching or resizing it. This can be achieved using the Fill filter. First, let's place a texture in this document. We do this by going to the right menu with the three dots in a circle and choose Place. I'll find a texture for this example. Let's say this is the full size of the texture but we wanted to fill the entire area. It's also square and my document is not. So to avoid stretching it out, I'm going to go to the selection persona and grab the lasso tool. I'll select an area that's a good average of the texture, avoiding anything like dark edges. Once I've done that, I'll invert the selection. What's now selected is the part that we'll fill. Make sure the texture layer is selected and choose the Fill filter. The magic of this technique lies in the mode type and we are going to choose In Painting. This option samples everything inside the texture and creates a fill based on that information. Hit Apply and wait a few moments. Affinity fills the outside with a matching texture. I'm going to deselect that using Command-D on the keyboard or going up to the right menu and choosing Deselect. For the most part, it does a great job and you can choose the Patch Tool, Clone Stamp or the In-Painting Tool to remove repeating patterns or blemishes. I read somewhere that it's not possible to embed an Affinity file inside another Affinity file on the iPad. That's actually not true. You can do it. It acts a little like a smart object in Photoshop. I'm going to create a new document and put a few basic elements on the page. The most important part of this operation is to save the file manually using the save a copy command. By doing this, I have access to the file. If I skipped this step, the file would be saved to Affinity Photo's internal sandbox system, meaning you wouldn't be able to find it on your iPad. I'm going to save it in this location here and close it out. Now I'll open a new document. If I go to the three dots in a circle up here and choose Place, I'll find the Affinity Photo document I just created and drop it right here. If we look at the Layers panel, we can see that it identifies this element as an embedded document. As a general rule, you can't open more than one document at a time on the iPad, but you can kind of do it with an embedded document. If I double click on the layer, it opens it up in a new window, and I now have access to everything and can edit it as I like. Keep in mind that this embedded document now lives inside the new document, and changes that we make will only affect the embedded document, not the original file we created. To go back to our main document, click the back arrow we can see the changes I just made. Here's something to keep in mind. If I apply a filter that's not a live filter, meaning that the effect doesn't appear on a separate layer, it'll convert the embedded document to a pixel layer, and we'll lose the ability to edit it. Let me show you an example. Make sure the embedded document layer is selected. I'll choose a Gaussian blur filter. Once I apply it, we get a warning that the layer has been converted to a pixel layer. I'll undo this. We can get past this limitation by using a live layer. Not all filters have a live equivalent, so it's not going to work with everything. But in this example, there is a live filter version of the Gaussian Blur, so I'll choose that. I'll make it a child layer of the embedded document so that it doesn't affect anything below. I can now add the blur and still preserve all the editing on the embedded document layer. This is an easy one, but something not everyone knows about. Because of the structure of the layers palette on the iPad version of Affinity Photo, 
it works differently from the desktop equivalent. When you create a layer mask on the desktop version, you can hold down the Alt slash Option key and click the mask thumbnail to see only the mask itself. This is extremely useful when you need to make sure you've made an accurate selection. The iPad version of Affinity Photo, as of this moment, does not recognize this method, but there is another way of viewing the mask. Let's create a mask and take a look. Now let's make sure our mask layer is selected and click on the three dots inside the circle at the top left. This will bring us to the layer options. The two buttons we are concerned with are visibility and solo. Visibility will just turn the layer opacity on or off. But if you click on solo, you can now see the mask by itself. You can toggle the solo button on and off to see the original layer. And in this view, you can continue to refine it using the brush. You can also toggle the visibility layer to see how the mask is affecting the rest of your image. So that's it. I hope you found these tips useful. I plan on adding more Affinity for iPad tutorials to my channel soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing in general, please consider subscribing to my channel.